All right, once again, we're uh, in the textbook. We're going to do a little bit of reading in the book. We're on section 4.5, more on Newton's laws, specifically free body diagrams and translational equilibrium, whatever that is. The objectives to apply Newton's laws in analyzing various situations using free body diagrams and understand the concept of translational equilibrium. Okay, now that you've introduced Newton's laws, some applications analyzing motion, the importance of these laws can be evident. They are so simply stated yet so far reaching. The second law is probably the most often applied because it is mathematically because of its mathematical relationship. However, the first and third laws are often used in quantitative examples, quantitative analysis, as our continuing study of the different areas of physics will reveal. I got this glare coming off the book from my angle, so I'm having a hard time reading it. And this simple relationship expressed by Newton's second law, F equals MA, allows the quantitative analysis, that means numerical, analysis of forces in motion. We can study the actual forces and the actual motion. We can think of it as a cause and effect relationship. The force being the cause and acceleration is the effect acting on a mass. The book is just wonderful. It's explaining everything. In general, we will be concerned with applications with applications that involve constant force. Constant force results in constant acceleration and allows us to use the kinematic equations. The kinematic equations are from chapter 2. They talk about, and in chapter 2 we talked about uh, keeping track of things as they move. We talked about uh, displacement from displaced to that place. We timed it and came up with velocity, and then we changed velocity to come up with acceleration. We said, we don't know how they got moving, we'll just assume a car is moving. A car begins to move. This chapter deals with the forces. There's a variable force. Newton's second law holds for the instantaneous force and acceleration, but the acceleration will vary with time, requiring calculus. So if the force is changing, the acceleration changes, and that requires calculus. So we're going to limit ourselves to constant acceleration and constant forces. The second, this section presents several examples of applications of Newton's second law. So now we're going to do some more sample problems. The first one is the braking car. This is example problem 4.5, and it's a car that's hitting the brakes. So a car traveling at 72 kilometers per hour. So velocity initial is 72 kilometers per hour. We're doing it in our notes. I want you to do it in your notes. Don't just read it. Do it in your notes. Along a straight and level road is brought uniformly to a stop. Velocity final equals zero. Before I go any further, I'm going to say change in velocity. Change in velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial. So change in velocity is going to be equal to negative 72 kilometers uh, per hour. Okay. Now, if they give me time in seconds, I've got some things I've got to do about that. In a distance of 40 meters, okay, so the distance, they're giving me distance here. Distance equals 40 meters. All right, well, I'm going to change my change in velocity from 72 kilometers per hour to 7200, 72,000 meters per 3600 seconds. So it's 720 divided by 36, whatever that is. That's my change in velocity in meters per second. Mm, 20 meters per second. All right. It um, in a distance. The car weighs, so it has a weight of 8.80 times 10 to the third newtons. Wait a minute. They just told me the weight of this car, and I know a formula about weight. I know that weight is equal to mass times the pull of gravity. So they told me the weight, but we're assuming us on Earth, so I can find the mass of this car too. So weight divided by g is equal to mass, and so 8.80, 8.80 ee to the third divided by 9.8 gives me 897 kilometers, or um, 897 um, kilograms. Okay, so let's say. Uh, what's the force? 
I want to find force. I need mass times acceleration. <laughs> I just found mass and acceleration up here. Uh, wait a minute. I know on my kinematic equation up here, I know that distance equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Uh, initial velocity times time, one half AT squared. Uh, I've got distance, um, but I don't know acceleration or time, so I can't use that. Velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2AD. There it is. I can find that. Velocity final is zero. So z uh, velocity initial squared is equal to 2AD. So velocity initial squared divided by 2D is equal to A. So I can find A up here. I found M over here. I can combine them to find F. It works great. Now I'm going to go reveal and, uh, oh, look at, there it is. There's my how to think it through, how to get my solution, and then it works them out. Let's see what it does. It lists my given initial velocity, um, final velocity, distance traveled, and the weight of the car. Uh, so we're looking for forces, mass, and acceleration. Uh, we got to find mass. We got to find acceleration. So in this case, we got to find them both. Uh, mass is determined from weight, which you just did. Kinematic equations and uh, velocity final squared equals velocity squared plus two ad at distance. It tells you this equation there, and then it steps you through the equations. Talks about the minus sign. Talks about the mass of the car the weight and then there's a follow-up exercise um, and the answer to the follow-up exercise in the back of the book. There you go, example 4.5.